I have a house that's about 700 square feet, about 90 years old, and it's on a stem wall foundation, which is like a raised cement apron around the perimeter of the house. This is as opposed to having a slab. So there's a crawl space in here that's open and you can put insulation in and stuff if you want. I was a little distressed to see that my stem wall had tipped out on one side near an opening to the point that it was ripping off the siding that was, uh, that was extended. And I don't know if the stem wall had been doing that for years or I had changed it because I had started irrigating differently than before or I planted a couple trees. So I'm gonna talk about how I was able to write my stem wall, I hope, for on the order of a couple hundred bucks, as opposed to paying the tens of thousands of dollars that would have been necessary to lift the house up, rip this out, and put in a new stem wall. Okay, so the idea was, I'm going to get some earth anchors and drive them down through a hole in the stem wall, and then put a cable in, and then put a nut here on some threaded rod, and pull the stem wall back. So first we bought a piece of channel plate, a 10 foot long piece of channel plate that would go right here. And then we drilled some holes in the cement stem wall and got a long drive pipe, about a 10 foot long drive pipe to drive these American earth anchors. They're, they're, um, these earth anchors are metal triangles attached to a steel cable that you can drive in with a drive rod. And once they get in, you pull the drive rod out and as you pull on the cable, the earth anchor rotates itself and makes it very hard to pull it out. And so first we had to drill a hole. So I crawled back here and put the rod through here and attached it to the earth anchor and drove it down about six foot into the earth and then took this away, pulling out the drive rod and took that cable and bolted it on to an eye bolt connected to threaded rod and uh, put a couple of wedge shins here with a nut that I could tighten down. And theoretically these could hold 3,500 pounds, although I think that they came out at a lower force. So I, so I tightened seven or eight of these up along the length of 10 foot of stem wall and tightened them down and uh, it didn't work. So I thought I have to get tough, right? So what I did is I uh, put in some large rocks right here. Then I got um, a steel pipe with one inch inner diameter and pushed it up against the stem wall here. And then put a bolt in there with a nut around the bolt and press this up against the rock. Then I could loosen the nut and push the rod to push this back over. So this worked great. In the course of a couple weeks, I pushed this back about an inch and a half, and it turns out that the rocks also moved about an inch and a half in the other direction. I put three rods in so it would even out the force a little bit, and also when I got to the end of the thread length, I could pull one of them out and put an extra spacer like another piece of rock or a brick or a piece of metal so that as the stem wall and this rock moved, I could accommodate the movement of the stem wall and rock. So once I straighten this up, I wanted to be able to take these rods away and use this area, of course. And so I dug down here, and I was a little bit surprised to see that this didn't bulge out like they said it was going to. So I've got an issue with the guys who built this 100 years ago. Probably it just looks like this. <clears throat> and so what I did is then I laid some rebar along this length and filled this with cement and buried it and took away the pipes after the cement was hardened. So now, now the rods are gone and this is covered over with dirt. In the process, I did notice that two of the trees that I planted right up against my stem wall, which is probably too close, had cracked the stem wall. So I dug down and I cut their roots and I put an extra sand around them and, uh, and cemented that area and hopefully the stem wall holds as the tree grows. It might be worth asking ourselves how hard we had to push on this stem wall to make it move. Because I just pushed hard enough every day to hear it go and move about a tenth of a degree or about one thread length. And so in order to calculate this, we're just going to conserve energy because the work that I put in 
by turning the wrench to extend the rod is going to be equal to the work done on the house. And there's two parts. Work done to move the house plus the work done by friction between two surfaces. One surface between the pipe and the nut that I'm turning and the other surface between the bolt and the nut pushing the nut out. We remember from our physics that work is just the dot product of force times the change in displacement. And so the work that I put in is just the force I'm pushing on the wrench times the amount of distance I have to move. So let's just move it one rotation. So this is going to be the force of my arms times 2 pi times the radius of the wrench. And that's going to go into two things. One, the distance that this moves times the force I'm pushing on that house. So that's going to be the force on the house times delta x of the house. And this turns out to be one eighth of an inch because this, uh, because this bolt is eight threads per inch. It's a one inch diameter, eight threads per inch. Plus the work of friction, which is the force of friction times the distance that this has to move, which is about 2 pi r, where r now is not the radius of the wrench, which is what I'm pushing on. It's just this radius of the bolt, which is about half an inch. And we multiply that by 2, because I have two surfaces. One, the nut pushing on the piping, and two, the bolt pushing on the nut. I'm estimating that the length of the, of the wrench arm is about 10 inches from the center of rotation, from the center of the nut. And so this is on the order of 60 inches that I have to move my arm around one full circle. The force of friction is just the normal force, which is this force pushed on the house, times the coefficient of friction, which for lubricated metal is about 0.15. Again, times 2 pi r, which is 1 half of an inch, times 2. So 2 times 0.15 is 0.3, and half of 6 is 3, so this is on the order of 0.9 inches. And so we can simplify this, this is force on the house, 1 eighth of an inch, plus 0.9 inches, is the work out, is the work done on the house. And so we see two things here. One. The work actually moving the house is very small compared to the amount of work done against friction. Two, we see that this is about an inch, and this is about 60 inches, which means the force that I get on the house pushing it is about 60 times the force that I put in with my arms. And so I'm estimating that I was pushing about 30 pounds times 60 means I was getting about 1,800 pounds of force on each one of these rods, times three is about 5,000 pounds. So we were putting about 5,000 pounds on this piece of concrete in order to get it to move. You can read about other things that I've done with my house at this website if you're interested.